Right, so what are we doing today? <laughs> <laughs> so today we're looking at fitting the battery in the biggest beast box. This is the biggest one we do. It'll house a twin VESC and it'll take up to 16,000 milliamp hour batteries for some decent range, probably around 30 kilometers plus. So for this you'll need two batteries, uh, you want two 6S batteries, that's what the harness will make into 12S to feed the VESC and the motors. Um, these are about the biggest ones you can fit in, but you can fit in smaller ones down to probably a 6200 zippy would be the minimum you'd want in. Um, and then you're going to need a 2.5mm Allen key, but probably we're changing the torque, so you need a T20 Torx just to undo the top of the box. Then everything else you need is going to be inside the box and we'll go over that in just a second. There'll only be a couple of screws in, the rest will be in the box, just because you know you're going to have to open it anyway. We don't bother putting in every single screw for you. All right, so when you lift the top of the box off, be very careful as there's some connections in here. I'm going to start by just removing these just so it doesn't put any strain on these connections. So in the box you'll find some Velcro strips. These are just to help secure your battery. You'll find the remainder of the screws for the top of the box and some cables, balance lead extenders. You need these inside the box because the batteries mount the opposite way down and we need to get the balance leads to the back where the loop key is. Okay. Right, so once we've removed all the loose items out of the box, I'll just run through some of the connections. So this one with the four cables, that's for your Bluetooth, that goes into the COM port. You've got your PPM for your controller, that goes into the receiver. And then this little cable here is just to read the battery voltage. That goes to the LCD display. And you already have these cables um, zip tied in place. Here's for your battery harness. They go to your two batteries. This one's for your two vests. It should already be plugged in when you receive it. Um, also, some of the features on this box is we now have a magnetic back plate which covers the loop key. So this here is now your loop key. That's all covered at the back and the balance cables will come from the top of the batteries here over the back and into the, behind that compartment so you can access them easily. And the last thing to do before we start getting our batteries ready to be fitted is I'm just going to hang all these cables out of the way, unplug the two vests just to give us maximum room. And fuck! Let me try again. Out of the way. It'll give us a so here we've got our two batteries, two 6S batteries. Now if you've had these from brand new, you'll know that when you receive them, they're on a low voltage. They need bringing up to storage voltage. That'll just bring each cell up to 3.8 volts, balance them out nicely, then they're ready to be fitted in the box. And then while they're in the box, you can charge them up to um, the full 50.4 as a whole 12S pack. Before we fit the batteries, we're just going to look at the orientation. I'm just going to do a little test fit as well. I want the balance leads to be at the top and they need to go in sideways to fit in this box because it's a bit skinny. So again, power lead to the bottom, balance lead to the top. You can see these are a snug fit anyway. So the Velcro is just going to help hold all that in place. But they fit fine. We know the orientation, now we can apply the Velcro. So I'm going to grab the Velcro strips, we know our orientation and all I'm going to do is split the Velcro up to put um, one side in the box and the other side on the battery. And we're going to do it crossways, so the batteries will be that way and it'll be the opposite way in the box. We're going to stick down like that. So you can see, or should be able to see that I've laid the Velcro in lengthways across the box. <clears throat> And then we're ready to fit our batteries. So you want to make sure they're quite close to the side and close to the top of the vest. Just lay these in. Just like that. So our batteries are in, nicely secured with the Velcro. Um, we're going to take our balance lead extenders because we just need to extend these balance leads to the back of the um, box where that flap is, where we can get to the loop keys and everything else. Bastard. Right, 
And I'm just gonna try and tuck these in between the battery and out the back there. Next, we can connect the vest back up. And now I'm just gonna unplug the loop key just so I don't power up everything while I connect the batteries. And then these are two battery connectors here. Okay, so that should all be connected now bar the receiver, Bluetooth, and the LCD screen that's attached to the top of the box. Um, we can just power this on and just visually check the vests that, that we've got blue lights. And I can see two blue lights there. I know everything's working, everything's powered up, and we can move on with getting the top of the box on. So everything's in, it's all connected. We just need to make sure everything's flat. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of electrical tape just to hold things in place while we screw the lid on. You don't want anything bulging up and stopping the lid going down. Uh, apart from that, um, we just need to connect up the, connect the first connectors that were removed to take the lid off. Uh, those three there. If the only one that you might have trouble with is the PPM, just remember that the black cable goes to the brown cable on here and you can't go wrong because this can go in either way and one way it won't work. But that's the only thing to note, the other connectors are just one way only, you can't go wrong with those. So now I'm just going to screw the lid back on and join you in a minute. Right, so we've just got the last few screws to do in the top of the box. I've put the majority in so far. So we'll get these last two screws in and then I'm just going to talk you around the back of the box, what connections we've got there. We're going to connect the loop key together, just double check that the screen's working and the board's powering up fine. And then we'll just run through a quick video showing you how to charge this. So once you've got everything fitted, this is what the back will look like. This um, is now your loop key that powers the vest. This goes to your batteries. This will be your charge port now, instead of using the top of the box on, say, the monster box for the loop key. And then your two balance ports. This is all now covered by a plate that just hides everything behind there. But still, it's got vents just to let air cool the vests that are in there. So we're just going to power it up and just double check that everything works. Now we've got everything screwed back on. So I'm going to show you how to charge this board. First we're going to look at the Ultramat charger, then we'll look at the Ultra Power charger. If you need any more information on both of these chargers, we've got in-depth videos going over all the features and functions of both of them. So check those out. So to start off with, we're just going to connect the um, XT90. This is the charge lead for the batteries. And then you will have balance extenders with your batteries, so make use of those. You'll need them to connect up your balance leads. Okay, once that's all connected up and you're happy, check the connections are secure, you can turn the charger on. So the, when it powers up, it cycles through its input voltage, then a safety timer and then um, how long you want the buzzer to sound when it's finished charging. Then it will, should jump straight into LiPo manual. That's one thing you need to check. If it's not on there, you need to go into programmer mode and cycle through the options until you see LiPo manual at the top. Now you're gonna select your charge rate. For this battery, it's safe to charge up to 16 amps. But because this charger doesn't have a built-in power supply, or it does, but it's very tiny, it will only ever achieve sort of maximum four amps. So you can leave that at five amps and then we're just going to press enter to cycle over to the milliamps and you're just going to enter in the milliamp power of your battery. So for this it's 16. Oh, I stopped it dead on. All right. It's all right. So now we've set both of these, all you need to do is hold down the enter button. It should check the battery. It should give you a readout of how many cells it's reading. It should always read 12 if you charge it in this configuration. 
and it should give you a voltage of the battery so you can check that that's not below the minimum it, although it won't charge if it is and then you just tap enter once to start you can hear the fans kick in and it's starting to charge at that so now i'm just going to run through the ultra power charger we've only got one channel set up here because we're essentially just charging one 12s battery and then we're going to do the same connections here so power lead in and balance leads. And once we're happy with all the connections, we're ready to power the charger on. So on this one, when the charger comes on, it'll give you a cell count. If you ever see that brake connection sign, um, just specifically with this charger, all it is is the balance leads need swapping around. So I'm just gonna take the adapter plate here just swap these over and then if you hit the start button that will clear that error and you can see now we see all the cells in that battery so this charge is a little more simple you don't need to worry about putting your milliamp power in all you're going to do is change the current and like I said before these are alright to charge up to 16 amp this could charge up to 15 amp so we're just going to change the amperage up to 15 there and then just hold down the start and away you go so that was fitting the batteries and charging the batteries into the biggest beast box, that's 16,000 milliamp hour cells. We do a smaller beast box that will hold 12,000 milliamp hour. The process is essentially the same, except the, the cabling's a little different because of one VESC and obviously smaller. So do double check the size of your batteries before you purchase. All the information's on the website to the internal space of these boxes, so please double check that. And if you need to know about fitting batteries to any of our other boards, we've got videos of those, so go check them out. And thanks for watching. Sweet. I love it when a video wraps up. <laughs> Haven't been too many funny parts in this one, though, Amy. <laughs> this is a very serious video. <laughs> that was good, though. Sound. <laughs>